Hello explorers and welcome to another video. Today we are going to talk about Seth and Iskasi. And I think this is the easiest way to do it. There is a bunch of different ways to actually set up Iskasi, but I've gone through them and looked at it and I think this is the easiest way to do it. So let's jump right into it. So here we have a Ceph cluster, very simple. Uh, we can look at the actual um, dashboard here. We see that we have three hosts, three OSDs, not that much to it. We have a bit, bit of pools here. We have some CephFS and so on, but not really important. So this is what I'm gonna use. And then I'm gonna set up an image where I can set up an uh, iSCSI unit and run that through uh, Windows. So let's jump in here and first off we need to create a pool. So I will create a pool called iSCSI. You can call it whatever you like. Um, if you call it RBD, which, or BDA, which is the default then you don't have to uh, supply it. But if you can give it a good name so you know what it's all about. And then I create, will initialize that as an RBD pool. And when I've done that, if this were to be a production environment, you actually want to change your configuration a bit. So if we go into Ceph, Ceph Conf here, you can here put in a little bit of extra configuration uh, for your OSDs. And this is heartbeat grace, 20 seconds, heartbeat interval, five seconds, and then client watch timeout, 15 seconds. And you can change these up just so you have a tighter interval where you check is this up or not, or else it will be blacklisted and taken out. And that is very good if you are working with an image, so you have only the OSDs that are actually available and you pick things out and then bring them back when, when they come up again. Uh, in my setup where I only have three OSDs and they get blacklisted all the time because I don't have that good of a network between them, I will skip this step. But in a production environment, it's very uh, vital that you have this um, so you can have a better performing image. Uh, so let's jump out of there. And we need to install a bunch of packages here. So we will install the target CLI FB the uh, Ceph iSCSI, Python 3, RTS, Lib, uh, FB, and the TCMU runner. And these are all um, described in the documentation that you need these packages. So these we need to install on all our hosts. So let's go through and do that. So now I've gone through and installed these packages on all my hosts. So let's do some configuration that we need to do on all hosts as well. So first off, we will create this file iSCSI gateway config that we will put in our Ceph directory. And in that file, we will put some configuration. Very simple one. Here, first off, we need the cluster name. In my case, all my are default, so they are called Ceph. Then in this directory, the Ceph directory, it is Ceph, there is a client admin key ring. So that I will use in order to go in with the gateway, so that is the connection it will use. My pool, I call that iSCSI, you can call it whatever you like. The API, I won't have it secure for now, so it will be uh, over HTTP, not HTTPS. And then here we can add a trusted IP list as well. So I said that all my servers and also the client were a trusted IP list. If you don't add this, then anyone can go into your server uh, or use this uh, interface. But I think that is a good thing to set up. You can also set an API username and password and a specific port if you want. The default is admin admin and the IPA port is actually 5000, not 5001. Uh, but you don't need to set those. Uh, and then we need to do a system uh, control daemon reload. So we have the daemons available. Then we will enable our RBD target gateway. And that is what is used by Windows, for instance, to connect to this service. And then 
I want to check the blacklist uh, with LS here. And we see that a bunch of these uh, services here is blacklisted. And that was what I talked about earlier. If you have something that has slow ping, it will be blacklisted. The problem here now is when we start the RBD target API, the API service, it will try to remove these blacklistings and it actually fails. So the code there is a little bit brittle. I have done some code changes in some of the code that I installed and made it better, but it still crashes. So yeah, I just will clear this backlist and see that I don't have any entries there and then run the RPD uh, target API and start that. And hopefully now it will have uh, started and be running on 5000 here. So this is what I will do on the other host as well. And I will get back to you when I configure those as well. Now we're back to node one again. And now we want to add these gateways to our system here. So first off, I will set the SCSI API SSL verification to false in the dashboard. So I will remove that. And that is important if you are running over SSL, I will not run over it. If we look our, in our dashboard here for the iSCSI gateway list, we will see that that is empty. So now we want to add some gateways. So I will create three files here, gateway one, and this will be an HTTP address to admin admin, the IP address I have, and then 5000. If I do the same for two, and then change it up here to the second host, and then uh, do the same for three and change that up for the last host. Then I can run this command to add gateways, iSCSI gateway add dash i and then the gateway file. And when I do that with all my all three of my files here, we can later on look in this list and see that we've added three service URLs for three different gateways. And if we go into our dashboard here and look into block devices, iSCSI, we see that we have three gateways and they are all up, which is good. Uh, next up, I want to set up something that we can connect to in Windows. I will create an image here. I will create. This image will be my disk, could it be? It will be in the iSCSI pool. Uh, make this a little bit larger so it's easier to see. iSCSI pool. Uh, and let's give it 10 gigabytes of uh, space. And then all these features, you can set them if you want. I thought that these could be good. Journaling could be interesting as well. There is advanced feature as well for striping and so on, but I will not use any of those. And then I will create this. So now we see that we have my disk here. It's 10 gigabytes. It had provision zero bytes. It has a bunch of objects here and every object size is four megabytes. If we go into the iSCSI menu here, we see that we have something called targets over here. And if I go there and then create a target, I can say that I want to create a target that has this IQN, which is a specific uh, name for this specific target. And that is what you connect to. And then you have to add portals. And here I will add all my different hosts here as portals. I need to add an image, so I add this iSCSI my disk, and then I will change to ACL authentication and add an initiator. And here I need a client IQN. Now we need to go over to Windows to figure that one out. Um, so this took me a long time to figure out how to do this actually. But if we are over in Windows and then go into uh, the menu here. Windows and search for iSCSI. It's actually installed and it's a part of Windows, this iSCSI initiator. And the first time you start this iSCSI initiator, it asks you the Microsoft iSCSI service is not running. The service is required. Do you want to start it? Yes. So that is something that you need to have started here. And then we go in here and try to find the specific target. But before we can do that, we go into the configuration here and we can see that we have this 
IQN and then uh, 1991-05.com.microsoft colon desktop dash and then the, I, the name of my computer here pretty much. So if we switch back to our GUI for Ceph and then take that IQ uh, address that we had there and copy paste it in here and we don't tell any user or password or anything like that no images just add this initiate oh images we need to add our disk here of course but other than that we don't add anything and then we create this then we will have a target for this specific user in our portals here so let's see if we reload it perhaps it yeah, it shows up there and we see that it's still working. So it's setting it up, creating 40%. We see that it added two portals here. If we wait a little bit more, it added a third portal and then we will configure the initiator and images as well. So it takes a little while. This can be done manually through the uh, gateway client, but I think it's much easier to do it in here than to figure it out through that client and there it's done and we see that we are currently logged out with this client and it's often very much faster when you're not recording so that is an overhead of course and here in our overview we can see that we have my disk here but no one is connected to it yet um, so let's see if we can log into this one then switch over to our windows machine again and if we go here and refresh the, our discovery, we still have nothing here. Um, and if we go here to quick connect, we can say that we add our IP here, 57 for instance, and quick connect. Then it will find that specific target and connect it up to that um, cluster and we will get a discovered target down here. So there we see that we have this Ceph IQN that we had before and it's connected so we can say done and we see that it will show up in our list here Then under discovery here. We can actually add more portals. We can type in our other IPs here Add that one and 192 168 6 59 and that is just so we know that we have all the IPs in case that we need to restart any of them, it's good to have them all showing up here uh, as our discovery. This will also be one of our favorites. So now we're pretty much done with that. We have a, a connected device here. If we look on the devices, we can see that we have disk one here already. Uh, so now we're done with the IceCache initiator uh, properties. We can switch that down and then go over to disk manager because this disk will not just show up in Windows we actually need to define it so disk manager there we go create format partitions Let's start that up and now we have the disk management set up here so we see our disk one it was initialized here so we it asks us do we want to put a master boot record on it or do we want to put a GUID uh, partition table uh, on it and the uh, PT is not a partition style that is not recognized by all the previous Windows versions it doesn't really matter uh, for our test case here but in your installation it might be better to use the either or there so now it's not initialized yet but a disk will come online and be a basic disk here pretty much we can go in here and allo it's allocated at the moment so we will create a new simple volume here and this wizard will help us with this uh, task so we'll, let's go next and we say that all the space should be used uh, so we could either have a minimum of 8 megabytes or a maximum of all 10. We will assign a drive letter to it, E, will be pretty fine for my, my use case here. And perform a quick format on it. We could also enable file and folder compression if we want. We could give it a volume name or volume label. And we can have different allocation sizes and a different file system if we want that too. It's not really important for this specific tutorial. 
So now it's done. We have a formatted uh, E colon. So let's turn this down and then go in to our explorer instead so we can see this drive in action. And if we look in explorer under this PC we can see that we have a new volume E colon and it's 10 gigabytes pretty much. If we open that up it's just like any other drive. We can drag and drop any file to it and it will copy it over. And it's actually using some caching. So copying files over will be pretty fast. Then it will take a while for it to actually propagate out and be a part of the Ceph system. So if we go back here and then look at the overview, we can see that it starts to write a bunch of bytes here. The write operations are quite big. And we can see here, um, if we go to pools, we can see that it's reading bytes and writing bytes. And after a little while here, we can also see that it actually is populating it more and more here. And it actually will take a bunch of space if you just copy over a little bit because it's a formatted drive. So it needs to write a lot of different objects, but that makes the actual changing of data or writing more data later on faster because the objects will already be there. But there, there is a little bit of an overhead with using these kind of images. This was what I wanted to cover today. I hope that you found this interesting. I hope that you learned something today. If you have any questions or suggestions, leave them down in the comment section down below. If you haven't subscribed yet, please do that. And I really hope to see you in the next video.